Exodus chapter, uh, chapter 3, verse 6. Exodus chapter 3. I read from verse 6. And it, it reads Exodus chapter 3, from verse 6. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt. I have heard their cry by the reason of the past masters. For I know they are sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians and to bring them all out of that land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusite. In Matthew chapter 16, I read from verse 18, Matthew 16, reading verse, from verse 18. And I saw some to thee, and thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And in Matthew chapter 24, Matthew 24, I read verse 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my ways shall not pass away. From this chapter, some verses, I'm bringing to you the topic. The covenant keeping God. Our Father in heaven is the covenant keeping God. He is God, the abodement of holiness, abodement of power, of abodement of righteousness. He is the abodment of every good thing. In fact, whatever promise or agreement he made. He will fulfill the promise because he cannot lie. I do not know 
the promise is you have discovered in the Bible that God has made with you. I'm assuring you, go keep the promise because he cannot lie. If you look at the Bible in Numbers chapter 23, I read from verse 19, Numbers 23, and from verse 19, look at the Bible, and I read Numbers 23, look at it, read it verse 19, and it reads, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Had he said, and shall he not do it? Or had he spoken, shall he not make it good? So, it is very clear what God said, he will do it. Because he cannot lie. Praise the Lord. In fact, in Titus chapter 1, verse 2, Titus chapter 1, reading verse 2, I read, Titus is after the book of Timothy, you get Titus chapter 1, and verse 2, and it says, verse 2, and I read, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. God has made promise and he will fulfill the promise. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 12, Jeremiah chapter 1, I read verse 12. And all I want you to understand that whatever promise God has made, Whatever God has spoken concerning us is an agreement and is a covenant. That work must be fulfilled. If you look at Jeremiah chapter 1, reading verse 12, look at the Bible, and it says, and I read chapter 1, verse 12. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou art, thou hast wasted seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. I will hasten it. I will watch over my word to fulfill it. In Isaiah chapter 55, verse 10. Isaiah 55. I read from verse 10. Look at the Bible. All I want you to understand. God is not a man. Whatever he said, he will surely bring it to pass. Isaiah 55, reading verse 10. And it reads, verse 10, For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and board, and it, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be. I go it forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the things was where, where to I send it. What God said. He said, I will bring it to pass. He says something to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. I read from verse 1. Genesis chapter 12. Look at the Bible. God, whatever he said, must surely come to pass. Chapter 12 and verse 1. Now, the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out to thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house on the land that I will show thee and I will make of thee of a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing and I will bless them that bless thee 
Look at it. I will bless them that bless thee, and cause him, and cause him that cause thee, and in thee shall all families of it be blessed. So God has made this promise unto our Father of faith, and I want you to understand all these promises and all His words shall never go unfulfilled. He fulfilled everything he had said. So, it is time for God to renew our covenant on this coming Easter. The Easter program on 30 and 31st. God is going to renew the covenant he has with the chosen people. So, today, God is said to remind us that he is the covenant keeping God and that he will fulfill the covenant he has made with the chosen ones. That covenant must be what? Fulfilled. Whatever God said concerning us, he will bring it to pass. If you look at the Bible, in the book of um, Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1, Isaiah chapter 60, I read concerning the chosen ones. And he said, Arise, shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and cross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of the rising. Lift up thy eyes round about, and see all the all they gather themselves together, they come to thee. Thy son shall come from far, and thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thy heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. The multitude of camels shall cover thee. The dromedresses of Midian and Ephraim and all to other place. All they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense. They shall show for the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Keda shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Naboth shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance of my altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. Who are these that fly as cloud, as the doors to their windows? Surely the eyes shall wait for me. The chiefs of touches first to bring thy son from far, their silver and their gold with them unto the name of the Lord thy God and to the Holy One of Israel because he has glorified thee. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy works and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Therefore thy gates shall be opened continually. They shall not be shut day nor night that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles and their kings and that their kings may be brought. Verse 12 For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yeah. Those nations shall be utterly wasted. But look at verse 13 And the, the glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee. The fig tree, the pine tree, and the boss together to be the place of my sanctuary. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves at the sole of thy feet. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas thou hast been forgotten, forsaken, and hated, so that no man went through thee. 
I will make thee an eternal excellence, a joy, a joy of many generations. And look at that place. Thou shalt also suck the meek of the Gentiles, and shalt suck the breasts of kings. And thou shalt know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer the mighty one of Jacob. For grass I will bring gold. For iron and for iron I will bring silver. And for wood grass and for stones iron I will also make thy officers peace and thy exertors righteousness. Violence shall no more be had in thy land. Wasting or destruction within thy borders, but thou shalt call thy word salvation and thy gate praise. The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for the brightness shall be upon shall the moon give light unto thee, but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting life. Thy God, thy glory. Thy sun shall no more go down. Neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. For the Lord shall be thy everlasting light. And the days of thy morning shall be over. Thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, the works of my hands, that I may be glorified. And a little one shall become a thousand. And a small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. You see, this word of promises was not made to me while I was in consciousness. It was made to me in subconsciousness. I was sleeping. And then this covenant was, this promise was brought to me. And I was reading and reading and reading this particular chapter. And I woke up. And I was saying, but what is all this? The Lord reminded me, I've told you what I'm going to use you to do. But it's like you are saying, how can you do it? Now, I'm showing you now the scriptures so that you know that the word of God is truth. This is what I want to do in your life. And I want to let you know, when I received this ministration, the Lord Jesus was not established. When I received this ministration, we don't have what you see today. You don't see all the camera that is around here now. And all the things that I see all over the places, all the more to coming from everywhere and becoming chosen. It's just because this is the covenant God has with your pastor. And this covenant must be what? It's not by power. It's not by might. He said, I will hasten it in his time. And I'm telling you, God is set to fulfill the covenant. That is why he's renewing, he's bringing us today to know that this covenant must surely come to pass. And as we come Saturday and Sunday of 30 and 31st, this covenant shall be renewed. If you believe it, say amen. Do you know everything about the Lord chosen is as a matter of this covenant? Are you hearing me? Because God cannot lie. Whatever he says, he watches over it to do what? To perform it. And so, be rest assured that I and you, God has something for us. And he has made the promise and he cannot lie. He see you. All I'm assuring you, it is your time to shine. No matter the darkness and wickedness and evil going on in the society, he said, arise and shine. Because the glory of the Lord is risen upon the gross darkness shall cover the earth, gross darkness the people, but the glory of the Lord shall be seen upon the chosen people. If you believe it, say amen. Now, this 
is your promise covenant God made with your pastor. Now, let's move ahead. If you look at this place, in the book of Ezekiel chapter 34, I read from verse 25, Ezekiel 34. Reading from verse 25, and it reads, And I will make with them a covenant of peace. And will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land. And they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the wood. And I will make of them and the places round about my heel a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in his season. That shall be showers of blessing. And the tree of the field shall yield her fruit, and the, the air shall yield her increase, and they shall be set in the land, in their land, and shall know that I am the Lord. When I have broken the bands of their yoke, and delivered them out of the hands of those that serve themselves of them, I am assuring you, this covenant will be fulfilled. Covenant of peace, of long life, and blessings shall be our portion in Jesus' name. If you look at the book of First uh, Peter chapter two, verse nine, First Peter chapter two, look at your Bible. God has something to do, something to do with us, and I want to assure you, as a choosing person, my friend, you have a portion in the Lord. There is nothing to worry, nothing to fear. I'm assuring you, God will take care of you. If you believe it, say amen. I read First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. We have a place in the Lord. And I'm assuring you that God knows you. He knows that you exist. Everything about you is about the Lord. In chapter 2, verse 9. Look at that place. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. And it reads, But ye are what? A chosen generation. My brethren, listen to me. You see, this is our generation, my friend, which shall be in charge until Jesus comes. Now, look at our place. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation. A peculiar people uh, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you after darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now what the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. You see this covenant. My friend, it's for you and for me. Are you here? If you be a chosen, I'm assuring you, God has chosen us as a royal priest, a peculiar people, a holy nation. I'm assuring you, God has something to do with you. And so, you shouldn't bother yourself on trouble. I will show you what to do. At every point in time, remind God of the promises. God will bring it to pass. Can I hear you say amen? amen? And so take note. Everyone should understand that God will surely fulfill the promise. Will he? He has made to us all the promises that are made to us in the Holy Scripture. God will bring them to pass. <laughs> Do you believe it? I say what God said concerning us. It is the responsibility of God to fulfill it. It's not their responsibility. God told the children of Israel, I bring you out of Egypt. I will take you to the promised land. It's the responsibility of God. God made the promise to Abraham to give me a child. A child of his own power. It's the responsibility of God to fulfill it. And I want to let you know, God entered the covenant with Israelite and they, to make, in, they make them his first, son, first born and to walk with them. 
and God fulfill it. I want to let you know, uh, the, it is the responsibility of God to fulfill his covenant with his people. The covenant he made with us, my friend, God will fulfill it. Do you believe it? Well, whether you believe it or not, I have nothing to worry. In your very eyes, you will see the, for all the promises being fulfilled one by one. If you look at Psalm 89, Psalm chapter 89, let's see something. Psalm 89, I read verse 33. Look at your Bible. Psalm chapter 89. And from verse 33, nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. My covenant will I not break, nor utter the thing that is gone out of my lips. Any statement I made, I can't change it. Promises I made, I will surely do all. I will never break it. Is this the promise that God made with us in these scriptures we are reading? Whether it be Isaiah chapter 60, whether it be the book of Ezekiel, whether it be the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, I'm assuring you, God can never break them. He can never change. As long as we remind God and lay hold on them, God will bring them to pass in Jesus' name. I said, God cannot utter his promise. Look at verse 3. Verse 3. Uh, uh, Psalm 89. I read verse 3. Chapter 89. Verse 3. I have made what? A covenant with my choosing. Do you know God I make covenant with us? As he made covenant with um, David, with uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God has made a covenant with the chosen. And he said, this covenant, I will not, I I'm not hearing you. I will not break. Listen, I have made covenant with my chosen. I am very happy God has made covenant with me with you. <laughs> Will he fulfill it? Yes. And he said, and he said, I have sworn unto David, my servant. He said, I have sworn. My friend, listen to me. Whatever God said to the people of old and to those that had covenant with, God is also saying the same thing. He has sworn and he must surely bring it to pass. If you believe it, say amen. <laughs> so take note. God has made covenant with the chosen. And if you look at that place in uh, Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 2, he said, I watch this, I ask him, I walk to perform it. You see, God will fulfill the promises. I say God will fulfill the promises. So whatever you need, chosen people, whatever you need in this life, the promises of God covers them. How many of you believe? Whatsoever you need in this life, from A to Z. I say the promise of God does what? Cover them. And I will show you what to do. You need to find what is written concerning you. And lay hold and ask for it. Claim it. God will give it to you. In fact, in the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 19, God said, but my God, the scriptures, but my God shall supply all our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ. My friend, how many needs? Is it not clear that everything you are looking for, that God has promised to give it to you? Can God lie? Can God utter his word? Can God change? Brendan, please answer me. You see, the problem many of you are having, please listen to me very well, is unfaithfulness, is insincerity, is disobedience, is stubbornness, is sin. You have an appointment with God by 8 o'clock, 
they are coming by 11 and 12. My friends, that is breaking God's covenant. And if you break the covenant, you can't ask God for fear your covenant. Now listen to me, some of you, you don't obey the word of God. You don't do the will of God. And uh, you want God to also fulfill his word. My friend, listen to me. Agreement is fulfill your part. I will do what? I'm not hearing you. Fulfill your part of the agreement. I will fulfill my part. Because it is two persons that enters into covenant. Therefore, if you fail to fulfill your part, that is your problem. That's why you are suffering. That's why I see. That's why the promise of God is not working for you. But this promise of God, I want to let you know, heaven and earth shall pass away. It can never pass away. It must be fulfilled. So many of you have refused to live righteous life, holy life, and you're asking God, bless me, bless me, answer me. And you have not kept your part of covenant. And so, I want to let you know, God watches over his word to do all. At the same time, he provides the covenant he entered your own part. Remember, when God called Abraham, he said, come out of what? Your kindred, your father's house, your country, a place I will show you. If Abraham refused to go, will he enter into the promises? Will he, will he be blessed? All right. That is your problem. God has made a promise and many of you refuse to do your part. And you want God to bless you? You want God to answer your prayers? You must change your mind so that this coming program, you must begin to realize the promise of God in your life in Jesus' name. <laughs> Have I not told you that the promise of God covers all your needs? You don't need to suffer. You don't need to struggle. You don't need to be running up and down like unbelievers. Unbelievers can suffer, they can struggle, but you, whatever you have after you are born again, is a gift of God and is by miracle. You don't understand what I'm saying. Paul the apostle said, By the grace of God, I am what I am. After you are born again, you live by grace. You're not living by struggle anymore. Well, let me rush through, rush through the flowing as we go on. Oh, please pay attention. Uh, one thing as I want to take note. Today, God of choosing will bless you as you keep to the covenant. And fulfill his promises in this oncoming program. And I want you to understand, if you are among those that say, um, God, God of choosing, will you fulfill your, your covenant? Which I make to the chosen one. Do you know what God is telling you today? I'm asking you a question. Now, look at the book of Isaiah chapter 7. Isaiah chapter 7. Maybe you are saying, uh, how can you do it? How can you fulfill it? How can you? Look at what God is telling you. If you are among those that are asking God, how can you fulfill this promise? Look at what God is telling you in today's program. The book of Isaiah, please, all those outside, please allow them to come into the hall. Stop directing them up and down. All church, please take away from the person directing them. Ask people to come into the hall. Praise the Lord. Isaiah chapter 7. The Lord is the one that brought them here. Don't send them away. The Lord has something to do for you. In this program today, I am very, very sure. In Isaiah chapter 7, Isaiah, I read chapter 7 and verse 11. As the sign of the Lord thy God. You know that he said, Holy God, fulfill the covenant. What is God telling you? Sister, please, what is God telling you? You are saying, will he go fulfill the covenant? Will he go fulfill his promises? Do you know what God is telling you? Ask for a sign. 
Ask for a sign that God will heal you. Ask for a sign that God will give you a husband or wife or children. Ask for God. Ask for a sign that God will fight for you. Ask for a sign. The man he told before was afraid. But God said, whether you are afraid, what I said, I will do it. In chapter 7, I read verse 11. Ask the sign of the Lord thy God. Ask it either in the depths or in the height above. But I have said what? I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. And he said, hear ye now. Oh, ye house of David, is it a small thing for you to weary men? But will you weary my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Whether you ask for a sign or not, whether you are running away from asking sign, God will give you a sign in this day program that is the covenant keeping God. Come on 30 and that first. God will prove to you that God is the promise keeping God. But if you are doubt, he said, I will give you a sign. You see today, God will give you a sign. I don't know what they are going through. God said, even if you say, I will not ask a sign, I will give you a sign. And so, in this message, let me run through the flows of headings. One, the reasons and the examples. Two, our expected response and the benefit. Not point number one, the reasons and example. As the Easter program is drawing very close, we need to understand that our God is the covenant keeping God. Remember, he said, my covenant I will not break. That means he will keep his covenant. Am I right? According to the book of uh, Psalm 89, verse 33 to 34, and verse 3, he said, I will, not keep, I will not break my covenant. I will not utter my word. What I said, I will do it. Praise the Lord. So, take note. Everyone must take the oncoming program very serious. Is this, this coming program, take it what? Very serious. Because it is a, a great time with God. When God is going to renew the covenant that he has made to us. So that every one of us will begin to benefit from that covenant. So we must take the program very serious. No one should make excuses or excuses. No one should come late in this coming program. No one should miss the first day. Remember, God has nothing to do with the first. You must give God, number one, priority. So, nobody must miss the first day or even attempt to miss the second day. There is no excuse because whatever you are looking for outside there, God has it for you. Come that program. All the promise of God covers all your needs. If you look at the book of Luke chapter 14, Luke chapter 14, I read from verse Luke 14 from verse 17. Please open your Bible. Let's read. 14 from verse 17. And it reads, look at your Bible. And he sent his servant at the supper time to say to them that were being come for all things are now ready. How many things are ready? How many things are ready in the Easter program? All things are now ready. Have I not told you that the promise of God covers all you are looking for? Now, he said, come, all things are now ready. Let us see how the people that he called and told them all things are ready. Let's see how they reacted. Let's see whether they said, okay, we will come, we will come, we are coming. And find out chapter 14 and verse 6, verse 18. And look at it. And they all with one consent began to make a school. Can you imagine? All of them began to do what? Make a, let us find about whether the excuse is excusable, whether it's reasonable. Look at that place. And this all with one constant began to make a school. The first said, Look at it. 
I have bought a piece of ground and I must need go and see it. I pray they have me excused. He went away. About how many pieces of ground? Answer me now. One piece of ground. And then he, the promises said, Come, all things are now ready. He chose to take one thing. He chose to hold on one piece of land. 99% of the things still waiting for him. Is that the excuse reasonable? My sisters and brothers, is the excuse reasonable? Somebody will call, come and take all things. He said, I bought a piece of land. Is it not a, you know, a excuse that is made without knowledge? Now, look at it again. Look at it again. It's chapter 14. Look chapter 14. Let nobody be like this man. Are you here with let nobody be like these people. That is lack of what? Knowledge. And I pray it shall never be your portion. Chapter 14 and verse 19. And another said what? I have bought five yoke of oxen. And I go to prove them. I pray they have me. Excuse. Is it my wise? 110. Is I bought a five yoke of oxen. Now, if you look at that place again, another said, I have married a wife. Mm -hmm. And therefore, what happened? I cannot come. I married a wife out of 100 things. All 100 things they're giving to you, you took only a wife. No money, no house, no, no nothing. You just took a wife. And you cannot come. My friend, their excuse is unreasonable. Let it not be that you or any member of my family or all the people around you will make excuses and say I will not come. My friend, the person will look losing a lot of things. Come. How many things are ready? All things are now ready. Easter program, I want you to understand whatever you are looking for is available for you. It's ready for you. Come and take them free of charge. Will you come? Don't make excuses. Don't make light of the invitation. Come. Everything, everything is waiting for you. If you look at Luke chapter 19 and verse 41. Luke chapter 19. Please open your Bible. Let's read. Chapter 19, verse 41. And when he was come near, he beheld the city, city of Jerusalem. What happened? And wept over it. Why was Jesus weeping for Jerusalem? Who can tell me? They don't know the time of their visitation and prepare and ready to receive whatever they are looking for because they were careless and they do not understand what belongs to them. They started doing what the Lord started doing what weeping over them, their poverty, their lack of knowledge. The Lord was weeping. And look at what the Lord said. Look at it, please. Look at that place. And said in verse 42. And I said, if thou hast known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thy eyes. But the day shall come upon thee, and thy enemy shall cast the threats about thee, and compass thee round, and keep thee in the in the in on every side and shall let thee even with the ground and thy children within thee and they shall not live in thee one stone upon another because thou knowest not the time of thy visitation instead of taking advantage of the time of thy visitation by grace and as an escape you'll be waiting when the antichrist Will it come when that grace would have gone and they would deal with those people and deal with them ruthlessly? And he said, You don't know your visitation. That's why you cannot make a, a escape and repent and amend your ways. So I want you to understand this is the time of your visitation. Do you hear me? Whatever you are looking for is now ready. 
in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 he said my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge in Daniel chapter 11 verse 32 he said those that do know their God they shall be strong and do as well if you have knowledge of what belongs to you what God has for you you will be strong you possess your possessions therefore avoid lack of knowledge every promise God has made with us or made to us must be fulfilled will it be fulfilled promises of God must be fulfilled and the example about the Lord said for the Israelites he said in Exodus chapter 6 let's read it let's read Exodus chapter 6 we read it before let's read it again Exodus chapter 6 I read from verse 6 chapter 3 please Exodus chapter 3 from verse 6 and he says chapter 3 verse 6 moreover he said I am the Lord I am the God of thy fathers take note I am the Lord of thy father I am the God of thy father the God of Abraham the God of Isaac the God of Jacob and when and Moses hid his face for he was afraid to look upon God and the Lord said I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt I have heard their cry by the reason of the past mothers for I know their sorrows and I have come down to do all let me ask you a question did he deliver them God made a promise I saw what they are passing through I'm come to deliver you as a matter of covenant and promise did he deliver them yes. brethren the promise God made to you will be fulfilled yes. it will meet all your needs yes. it will heal you yes. it will deliver you yes. it will fight for you he will make a way where there is no way for you in Jesus name now look at it he said in Matthew chapter 16 verse 18 I will build my church what happened the gates of hell shall not prevail against it I want to ask you a question do you believe that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church yes upon all that the persecutor did that against all the um, apostles and the, uh, against Jesus against the children of God in time past did they stop the church even the persecution you the chosen people had from one person to the other from 2010 or 2006 to 2013 everybody was talking everyone was talking did he prevail against the church please answer me now from 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 Linda to Juliet to this person to that person everyone talking against the choosing because of contentions and envy and because of trying to establish uh, they are, you know whatever they are doing and they want to use choosing to advertise themselves but the point is this did they prevail I will build my church in fact at that time let me tell you something and that time of those persecution they said we will never come to Adamawa state uh, uh, that we can never come there if they will come they know that whatever we are, you know, they, said, they said a lot of things we will never come to I want to ask you a question did we go to Adamawa state <laughs> how many of you knew what happened in Adamawa state <laughs> in Adamawa state everybody including the number one person in Adamawa state Bow down before the God of Jesus. Man down. Everybody in Alabama State. They say, We will not come. Let us come now. Let us come and see. They say, We will not come. And he said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Come that day. Everybody, from governor to the least of the people, everybody came to the crusade. And there was great, oh my God, you see power in oppression. My friend, my friend, you know, the Lord choosing something is not imagination. It's, it's, it's very, very apparent. 
If we come to your side, you will know there is God because I can't come near you. I will stay where I am. You will see God doing, you will see power moving up and down. Look at him. Praise the Lord. And when everybody saw it in Adamawa State, they bow. I want to let you know I will build my church. What happened? God's word must surely come to pass. If you believe it, say amen. Now, pay attention. This is the time God said, come on 30 and 31st. We want to renew the covenant. These promises are made. I want us to renew them. Review them. Remind me of them. Praise the Lord. So, all that God said, he watches over it to do what? To perform it. He see you. There is something God said concerning you. And it has not been fulfilled, but it must be fulfilled. Whether the devil, demon, human agent like it or not, the counsel of the Lord. That child stand. Do you believe it? I want you to understand God has something to do with me. I don't know about you. <laughs> I said, God has something to do with me. And what God has to do with me, He will finish the work. If you believe it, say amen. The case of hair shall not prevail. Let somebody say amen to that. Yeah. Remember, the covenant he has with Abraham, did he fulfill it? I'm asking you a question. What about with the Israelites? What about with Moses? He made the covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He fulfilled it. He made the covenant with Noah and Moses. David and the Israelites and the Lord had made covenant with us. I'm assuring you all the promises all the promises that covenant enter with them, he fulfilled them at the same time. He will fulfill the promises he made to us from beginning to the end of this ministry everything God said he will bring it to pass. If you believe it say amen. Now if you look at your Bible in the book of Exodus again. Exodus, let's read. Exodus chapter 6. And I read. Exodus. Look at your Bible. I want to let you know. God Almighty is a being. He wants us to remind him. And he will, this time around, he said to remember every covenant he entered with the chosen people. Chapter 6, I read verse 5. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians kept keep in war. What happened? What happened? And I have remembered my covenant that settles it. He see this Easter retreat, God will remember the covenant he entered with you. And you are family with the choosing people in Jesus' name. And what God remember, count it all. I'm not hearing you. He see you, some of us that are here, some of you, some of us, God will make a new covenant with you. Yeah. How many of you believe it? In Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 31. He sees some of you that are walking and living in life without any promise that covers you. Come 30, 30 and 31. Please look at the Bible. Jeremiah chapter 31. I read verse 31. He sees you. Something new is coming your way. And that could be who? Who? Who is that person? Who? Oh yeah, don't say you, say pastor. 
Good. Did you hear me? Chapter 31 of Jeremiah, verse 31. And he said, Behold, the days come, say the Lord, that I will make war with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. He see a day, the day shall come, 30 and 31st. A new covenant is coming your way. A new covenant is coming over your life. God will make a new covenant with the chosen in Jesus' name. Don't forget, in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, he said, For I am God, I change not. Has he changed? He can't change because of you, because of your need. He said, For I am God, I change not. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, he said, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he did in the Bible, he will do it today. Because he is the same forever. In Isaiah chapter 55, verse 10, Isaiah. Let's read it again. We read it before. Let's read it because of the import in this message. 55. Read it, verse 10. Look at your Bible. As the rain, for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me word void. But it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. You see, whatever God said concerning you, it shall prosper. It shall be fulfilled. It shall come to pass. I don't know what they are going through. He see you from now to the thirty and that first. God will enter a new covenant with you. He will make impossibility to become possible in your life in Jesus' name. If you look at this place in the book of um, Psalm 89, verse 3, he said, I have made covenant with my people. Which people? I didn't hear you. I have made covenant with my choosing. Oh, thank God. I have covenant with God. I am a covenant child of God. He see, this covenant shall be fulfilled. If you believe it, say amen. And he said, my covenant will I not break. I'm happy. I'm dealing with the faithful God. Who cannot lie. Who can do and undo. Who has promised me. And he will fulfill the word. He see you. God will fulfill the word. He said in Matthew 24, 24, chapter 24, please, 24, and verse 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away. What happened? What God promised you can never go on for feed. If you believe it, say amen. So we all must come to renew our covenant in this oncoming program. For the children of God in time past, sometimes they will go to renew their relationship with God. Now look at this place. In 1 Samuel chapter 11 verse 14, 1 Samuel chapter 11. Sometimes they go to renew covenant, renew their relationship with God. In 1 Samuel chapter 11 and verse 14. Please open your Bible. Let's read chapter 11 verse 14. Then said Samuel to the people, Come, let us go to where? Giga, and renew the covenant, the kingdom there. They went to renew the kingdom in Giga. Now listen to me. We shall go up to the mountain of the Lord, on top of the mountain, on 30 and 31st, to renew what? The covenant. Are you hearing me? As Samuel and his people went to Giga to renew the kingdom, we shall be here on 30 and 31st to the new world. I, I'm not here. Are you sleeping? What are we going to renew? So, no one should isolate what God is about to do 
There are some people that they are that the type of nature they have. They always look down on everything, and that is their problem. That's why they're suffering. That's why they're limited. That's why they're poor. He don't limit God. When God says I will do a thing, He will do it. Are you hearing me? When God says I will do a thing, my friend, begin to jubilate, begin to rejoice, begin to, in fact, begin to dance, because God is not a man. He cannot lie. He has all the resources. He has the power. He has whatever it takes to bless his people. He see you. Let me put it on your head. God will bless you this time. Say so back to sender. Did you hear what I said? I said I put it on your head. Even if you are running, God will bless you this time. Spiritually, physically, materially, financially. In fact, God will bless me too. Not, not only you, not only you. I'm not going to be, uh, I don't know how to say it. God will bless me too. Because this is a time which I renew our covenant. And I'm going to remind my daddy, Isaiah chapter 6, you said it to me, it must surely come to pass. And I'll be happy. I'll be happy, I'll be jubilated. You said to me, I said chapter 62, this will happen to me. This, I said, this is the time. Oh yeah, bring it to pass. And wait, you know, bring all of them. And it must come to a fact. Before that day, the yoke will break. I, I, I don't know. I have, I have covenants that I made with God, God made with me. And they, I know what to do. And I'm going to draw from it this time because it's a time to renew what? I'm not hearing you. Are you getting tired so I can round up? You know, I can round up in introduction. I can round up in first section. I can round it up in the second section. It's when I look at you, how you are, as you are looking. If I look at you, you are not looking well. I round up introduction. If you are looking somehow weak, I can round up in first, first point. If you're healthy, I will take you to the second point. Can I hear you say amen? All I know is this is a good day. And I can see my people jubilating home. You know, our relationship with God is not by struggle. The only thing you need to endeavor to do is to know what God said. Are you hearing me? It's not about pray, pray, pray. Just understand what God said and then ask something in a very short way. Because listening to you say, you shall know the truth. I'm not hearing you. And he said, those that do know their God. So it's about knowledge, understanding what God said, the ways of God, the will of God, and the promises of God, and then lay hold, and the righteous God will bring it all pass. He see you. Before I finish this message, <laughs> many of you will be jubilating. Because you are going home with something. You didn't come here for sure. He didn't come here for all the, you know, all the religious observances and sacrifices. I'm here to give you the truth. Are you hearing me? You shall know the truth. And the truth. There are people that go for religious observances and sacrifices. And they go for a candle and the, and the, and I want to let you know they remain in their bondage. But you and liberating you from your bondage. Do you believe it? So, are you getting ready? Do you want me to move to second point? I can see that you are very much alive. But what about heat? I'm asking you a question. What about heat? You can handle heat. All right, all right, all right. He see you. By this joy you have in you, 
my spirit is moved to say I bless you and you know that my blessing cancel your poverty cancel your sickness cancel your affliction cancel your trouble cancel your limitation So no one should isolate what God is about to do. In Revelation 22 by 17. Revelation 22, I read by 17. Look at your Bible. Revelation 22 from verse 17. And I read. And the spirit and the bride say, What? Come. And let him that hear it say, What? Come. And let him that is a test the world come and whosoever we let him take the water of life freely. Blessing will follow freely, healing freely, deliverance freely, promotion freely, children freely, blessing freely. I don't know what you are looking for, free of charge. You can never live here the same. Whether your enemy like it or not. Remember, I will build my church. Complete it. That is where I'm standing. Because I know who has spoken. He is almighty, the all powerful, the omnipotent Jehovah the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the Holy One of Israel, the one mightier than all, the God of the chosen people, the one has power to do this or that. Ezekiel chapter 34. Ezekiel chapter 34 and I read. Look at your Bible verse 25 and it says and that is for me and for you. What is it? And he said, verse 25, Ezekiel 34, verse 25, and now we make with them a covenant of peace. I will cause the evil beast that is causing all the killing and kidnapping and all the evil in Nigeria, the evil world, evil beast, I will cause it to cease out of the land. And the witch shall dwell safely in this wilderness of this world. And sleep in the wood. And I will make them and the blessing round about my hill. What? Blessing. And I will cause the showers to do what? To come down in his season. And there shall be war. There shall be shower. Oh, it is the promise of God. The answer is easy. We pray the shame saved from the Savior above. Oh, child, was so blessed. Child, so blessed. Will we mess it up from God? Suffer, but for the showers we plead. A big amen for that. Come 30 and 31st. If you are running away and you are under this rain, your body will be soaked. The blessings of God will wait to your body. I am sure. I am sure. In fact, somebody here, before this program, you will give a very great testimony. I am the one who. I am the one. You mean you are also among them? Yes. <laughs> he, he, he see you. 
before the Easter program you'll be shouting God is it how you are is it how you are is it how you are well if you don't know the person look at me do you know the person okay you uh, I, well if you are the one your testimony is my testimony if God has blessed you mightily also I will be uh, rejoiced because you are my children as God blesses you blesses my children he has blessed me too uh, didn't you see a man who said here that God gave his son um, uh, two flat of uh, in the lake for 60 million naira it's, it's not the son testifying it's the, it's the father because the blessing of the son is the blessing of what your blessing is my blessing your testimony is my testimony can somebody say amen he see you whether you or me before this program you will shout some of you will be looking for opportunity to come and meet me I say pastor it has happened it has happened praise the Lord there shall be shower That shall be seasoned with fresh sheep from the Savior Ramok Shall was so blessed Shall so blessed We need Mercy drop round the support only but for the showers we please a big amen. amen now sit down let me round up praise the lord we are looking at our expected response and the benefits knowing fully that our father is the covenant keeping god everyone should come with all our household all our friends and relations we must come in the oncoming program on 30 and 31st we should not toy with this program because god is said to renew our covenant the covenant of peace and blessing as the David and Israel renew the kingdom and Samuel renew the kingdom. So we are going to renew our covenant. We must invite others to come. We must invite them to come with expectations. Whatever they are looking for spiritually, physically, materially, financially, academically, let them come with what? Expectation. That God will fulfill his promises he has made to humanity, to church, to us in the holy scriptures. Are there promises like that? Yes, God has made promises. The, the holy scripture is full of what? Promises of God. That's why you should not suffer. Promises of God from Genesis to Revelation. Promises upon what? Promises. He said in somewhere Deuteronomy, he said, All this blessing will come upon you and overtake you. That is Deuteronomy 22, verse 1 and 2. And even to 13, all this blessing, he said, You shall be the head and not the tail. Whatever lay a hand upon it shall prosper. Blessing will fall as you go out. Blessing will fall as you come in. He said, All this blessing will come upon you and do all. Therefore, I'm assuring you that the promises feed the scriptures from Genesis we have a lot of what? promises and these promises must be fulfilled he said there shall be showers of blessing 
And also he said, I will hasten my word to do what? To perform it. So everyone must come to remind God of all what? All his promises he has made to us to fulfill them in your life. Remember Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 to 22. I'm not reading. And then look at Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah 43. And I read Isaiah chapter 43. Look at the Bible. And it reads verse 26. What did the Lord say? Please read it and explain. What did the Lord said? Isaiah 43 verse 26. Uh, are you there? Isaiah 43 verse 26. What did he say? Uh -huh. What are you going to put in remembrance? His word, his covenant, his promises put to me in remembrance. And let us plead together. Declare that, that thou mayest be justified. Whatever you remind God or promise he made to you in this program, God will bring it to pass. God has made a promise. He said, God shall supply all your needs. Whatever you lay your hands upon it shall prosper. Anywhere the soul of your future shall turn upon, that have I given unto you. That shall no man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Touch not my anointed, do my prophet, not by strife. I am healed. And I'm the Lord that healed thee. And the God shall supply all your needs. In fact, all these promises belong to somebody. Belongs to me. From Genesis to Revelation. No one should come late. Late coming is sin. And the breaking covenant. That is obedient. Are you hearing me? God will bless you and fight for you. When your obedience is what? For feed. So, no one should come late or come alone. Don't come alone. If you know what God is about to do for humanity. Bring them to God. We should invite others to the program. Invite sinners. Those have sinful habits. Those that are backsliders. Invite the prostitute. Drug addicts. Invite the barren. Those that have a delay in marriage. Those that are poor and unemployed. Those having stagnance in life, invite them. Invite those who have a rising and falling. Those that are on that course in their family and nothing is working. Invite the blind, the deaf, and the dumb, the paralyzed, those that have stroke, those that have kidney, heart problem, liver problem, those that are insane. Invite them to come. Those that are going terrible things in life, sickness that has no name. Invite them to come. Those that possess, those that have been oppressed, those that are bound, those that every night they will feeding them and couple words, and then they have been oppressed, they are walking naked, they are walking in the bush, they are walking in the old house, and they are suffering. Bring them to come. Are you hearing me? Those that front nowhere, back nowhere, right nowhere, struggling. Nothing is working for them. My friend, bring them. When the world comes forth, they shall be liberated. Can I hear you say amen? amen. The Bible says, He sent forth His word. What happened? And His word healed them. As they come, invite how many people? Everybody to come. We should invite all to come. For God is said to fulfill His promises or covenant. And will it answer all our? In fact, God will answer your prayers. Amen. Let me be more direct to you. You, God will answer your prayers. Amen. Sir, please say the same thing for me. To me, Amen. God will answer my prayers. Amen. I'm happy. God will answer my prayers. Yeah. Is it not a joyful thing? Yeah. The other day, that was two days ago, 
our pastor, we gathered together. And that day, was it three days or two days? The, the, the weather was terrible. The sun was, the heat was terrible. And then we said, God Almighty, please change this weather. Give us good weather. Now many people are suffering. Now we need a good weather. We need the situation to change. Do you know after that prayer, it didn't take three, three hours or two hours, rain started falling. And there was no any sign of rain. And I want to let you know, that is, and everywhere was cool. People slept very well, no heat. My friend, answers of prayer is a blessing. Are you hearing me? So there rain will fall in your life. Rain of blessings. Rain of miracle. Rain of favor. Rain of healing. Rain of deliverance. Rain of promotion. I'm going to hear your testimony. So get ready. You. In John chapter 14, verse 13, please open your Bible. Let's read. John 14 and verse 13. And I read. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, what happened? That will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, what happened? I will do it. Please, this is truth. And whatever you ask today, in fact, Philippians chapter 4, verse 9 said, But my God, God shall supply all your needs according to the riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Today, God will supply. He said, Put to me in remembrance. And today, ask for a sign that this very Easter program. That God is said to renew his covenant of peace, long life, and blessing for the chosen one. Ask for a sign. Are you hearing me? And as you ask for a sign, this God will bring it to pass. He will bless you. He will meet all your needs in Jesus' name. He said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, ask, it shall be given to you. Seek. And you shall knock, and the door shall be opened to you for everyone that asks. Christ. I don't know you what you are looking for, what you want to ask for, a sign that God will renew the covenant, come 30 and that first. As we are going to pray, ask that thing for God. Say, do this thing for me so I can testify on that day. Heal me, give me employment, give me visa, give me citizenship, give me connection. Lord, give me victory. Lord, make way where there's no way for me. Lord, bless me. If you will ask anything, God will do it. So, I want to bid you, all the workers that are here today, this message is to you. All our newcomers, this message is to you. That's why, because on Saturday, we are not going to gather here. We are going to go to Navy Town for a crusade. So that's why we said all the workers should come. But unfortunately, many of them went to business today because if all our workers are here, the whole of this hall from either end cannot contain us. So, but then, as many of you that are here, let us make sure, as we're not going to pray, we'll have a message on Saturday, let us take advantage of this ministration and move into action. Inviting everyone, bus to bus evangelism, person to person evangelism, and uh, you know, morning cry and evening cry, wearing your apron, and they going everywhere. In fact, taking a school from the place of work, fasting and praying six to six, and everything we can do and come out for you know, beginning from uh, Sunday, Monday, even today. Let us go for publicity. Are you hearing me? Let us make banner, print banner, put posters, whatever you can do to make this crusade a reality, a blessing to humanity. Come, the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Invite all to come. 
if you are late to make pledges, that's on your own. Anything you want to do, you do them with a good heart. For me, I want to say, if it is possible, we will not be making pledges again. All I want you to understand is, I want you to be blessed so that you can do whatever you want to do joyfully and freely without persuasion. He see you. As I round up now, the word I'm going to tell you is, come to Easter program on 30 and 31st. Let us renew our covenant of blessings and peace and long life with God and with our blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you come? Will your household come? Will you bring your friend to come? Will you bring any people around you to come? Covenant of peace and bless. Mm, covenant of peace. Covenant of blessing. Covenant of peace and blessing. God. Covenant of peace and bless. Over the choosing. That shall be your portion. Yeah. Remember that this year program is coming with a different way. In fact, that day, the team says God's covenant of peace and blessing. But I'm going to talk to you under that team, the power of abundance. Yeah. And I'm being frank to you. That will change your entire life. Yeah. What do I call it? Power of abundance under that team, God's covenant of peace and blessing. And after that program, you shall be a blessing to humanity. Yeah. Say it again. Yeah. Say it again. Yeah. Rise up on your feet. Tell the Lord, I will come. Give me grace to come. And tell the Lord, I need this sign. I need this. I need that. Open your mouth and pray. Everybody pray. Rise up and pray. Rise up and pray. Everybody pray. Everybody pray. Call upon him. O oh Lord, remember me. Bless me. Visit me. Lord, I pray. O oh Lord, this time around, give me a sign. Everybody pray. Everybody pray. 